Hello friends. One of the most uh, difficult decisions for a lot of youngsters today who are wearing glasses is should I get my surgery done? Should I get my power fixed? So today through this medium I would like to discuss with you the 10 points which you need to know if you are planning for a laser fixing of your eye or a lens which is another option should i go for the surgery is a question you need to keep asking yourself is this something which is driven by your need not to wear glasses or cosmetically you don't want to look with glasses your friends have asked you to not to wear glasses or parents are putting pressure whatever it is these questions always bother you always want to know am i doing the right thing by putting my eyes under a laser or a surgery so through this medium i'd like to bring 10 points which you need to know before you undergo a laser surgery the first point is should i let's assume that you have overcome this fear and come to one of us and decide to evaluate yourself for this procedure the second question is how good i am for this procedure is my eyes healthy will i get to know about this about the health of my eye about the structure of my eye and the strength of my eyes through basic evaluation the answer is yes So when you come to us we go through a multiple tests on your eyes from from every layer we test you it takes close to 2 to 1/2 hours it takes time because we look at look at every layer of your cornea which undergoes this procedure of lasik and then with all that reports you come to a surgeon and the surgeon looks at all this an experienced surgeon uses his experience and his human intelligence and also uses the artificial intelligence which is given by the machines to make a judgment whether you are suitable or not that is the most important and crucial point in deciding about the safety of your procedure after the surgeon looks at this a good institute or a good place will have multiple options for you the third question which comes to your mind is what kind of procedure are you going to do for me this is a very tricky question because many times lot of these technologies have been advertised through social media through advertising media or through friends or families so somebody comes to me and says that well this procedure looks like it's very costly and it looks like the most important uh technology available in this world or the most costliest in this world both are wrong the costly is not always right or the most advanced format may not always suit for you so what i request you to do please trust your surgeon if you come to a place trust your surgeon to choose what's the right for you because give him that right and please trust it if you do it he or she as a good surgeon will choose the right procedure for you and that's the most important thing and how does a surgeon choose the right procedure that's the fourth point he looks at all that scans in front of you and in front of your surgeon he looks at all the parameters he looks at your strength he looks at your corneal weakness he looks at predictability he looks at your age he looks at imperfection in the system and he looks at how a lens inside is balancing he looks at all that factors he looks at your retina I looks at sometimes even looks at your family members do they have any problems with the eye 
and then he makes a decision so this decision if you trust the place you were gone for a testing please allow this to allow your surgeons to take this for you and that would be the best way you can take it forward the other question is after you done with all the testing you explain everything to the surgeon about your needs your demands sometimes you you know you may want a reading is your laptop not your book if you're 40 45 years a surgeon has to understand that your most of your work is your laptop so that means it's intermediate vision if it's a near vision then it's this and laptop comes here and if you feel that you're a photographer and you want to see something beautifully to capture you need to tell your surgeons please be very clear about your needs sometimes you know you you can be expressive saying that i want this because i'm going for this surgery because i want to go for scuba diving i'm going for this because i want to do a bungee jumping i want to do this i want to do that it's because you're getting a surgery done because it's a complete change of lifestyle a complete change in how you see the world so be very clear and your surgeon can help you to make a plan accordingly after we're done with all this what is the fifth point is you should be transparent with all your problems and your surgeon should be transparent with all the problems which can happen post surgery so what we call it as a consent form we take pride at narayanathralaya that we try to be as transparent as possible with the people we meet surgeons are human beings machines are built by human beings so human beings also are imperfect machines are also perfect imperfect so sometimes what you want or what you want to aspire in your perfect quality of vision sometimes may not happen so we have to be very transparent that there's no magic here there's no magic bullet here 99% of the time everything goes well that's the beauty of this procedure but there's one time one person there may be some delayed healing sometimes delay in recovery all that has to be explained all complications whatever happen in the world it may be one in a million or one in 10 million but we have to write down and you have to know you as a patient have every right to know and i have for me my job is to make sure that you know that is called transparency and we give the consent form which explains everything and we give it not on the day of surgery we give it the day you meet us so that you have got enough time to go through it and then make a decision so let's assume that you you have selected a procedure you selected a surgeon you have selected the uh, the kind of technology you have given all your needs to the surgeon and then you decide that well i want to go for the procedure now and the fifth or the sixth point now is that you go for the procedure and when you go for the procedure the whole protocol of putting drops explaining to you what happens on the machines what kind of a machine we are going to do all that will be explained beautifully so make sure that you are aware of all this both on the table when you are with the surgeon if you feeling that well i am still not sure what is happening the surgeon can explain to you again till you are convinced like i'm repeating this the whole procedure of lasik is once you're mentally convinced that you want to take this step and our job as surgeons is to make sure that you're completely convinced about this once you do the procedure it takes a quick 8 to 10 minutes absolutely painless you have to trust my word on this it gives you i mean you feel at the end of it i tell my all my patients you go out smiling i've not had a patient who who goes out crying that they shouldn't have got it done i always used to joke with my patients if you had the third eye do you think you would have gone through this procedure 
And so far, I've not had anybody saying that I will not because this was painful. So trust me on this. There's no pain. It's completely clean. After you come out of this procedure, what to expect? That's the point you need to know. What you expect is that you expect a little bit of watering, just like how you shampoo gets into your eyes, exactly the same kind of a watering you will feel. Then we'll explain the drops to you. Depending on the type of procedure, sometimes we put a bandage contact lens. Sometimes people get worried, why, why did you put this lens on my eyes? If we put this lens on your eyes because if you are a contact lens user or if you have a very fragile ocular surface, that's your corneal surface, sometimes the cells are very fragile. Or if you have had a lot of uh, blood vessels all over, we put our contact lenses, it's a, called a bandage contact lens. There's nothing to be worried about it. It's a bandage contact lens. Sometimes we put it on one eye, we may not put it on the other eye, depending on the situation. It's not that there's a complications happen. You just put the bandage contact lens and this kind of keeps the eye from having pain or watering. It's for your own good. So it's very important to realize this and this is no big deal. And the very next day we take it off and we give you some tablets for pain and drops and other things and then you go home. Most of my patients come home uh, come back to the hospital next day driving. They're quite comfortable. They are quite comfortable with the quality of vision. They're also comfortable with the quantity of vision. There's two things, quality and quantity. Quality is how well you see what you're saving. Quantity is what, what, how, how much you can see. Both this quality and quantity takes time. It takes time because it is not, don't be in a rush. Remember, it's a surgery. The surgeons are confident to do it and skillful to do it in a very, very sparse way. Thankfully, because the machine, the people who help them, the technologies which help them to connect everything together, it looks like magic, but it's not. Please give time for it to recover. Don't be in that rush that if I don't see this much, I'm doomed. If I don't see uh, the last line of that thing, I'm doomed. I'm seeing glares. I see this light, I see scatters, rainbows. Don't worry about it. Each person heals differently. People ask me, my sister got it done yesterday. She's my twin and she's seeing everything clearly. Why can't I see? You're two different individuals. Sometimes both eyes don't behave the same. So people have a tendency to do this. I do this, I can't see this, my left eye. If you are, even now, if you're wearing a glass, look at a distance object six feet away and try closing your left and right. You will see that they're different. And doing it for the near, they'll be different. So remember this, eye has dominance. One eye may be dominant for the distance, other eye may be dominant for the reading. So after surgery, your brain undergoes a tremendous amount of neural adaptation. I use the word neural adaptation is nothing but the ability of the brain to actually interpret something which is seeing clearly for the first time after many, many years without your glasses. Glass is an optical medium. Contact lens is an optical medium. When you have this medium, what your brain is adapting in a different way. When you have nothing, it adapts differently. So remember one thing. It's not an Olympic rush. Just be calm and relaxed. Because if there is a problem, one of us will tell you, there was a problem, I need to rectify it. If there's no problem, if a surgeon says no, nobody tries hiding anything here. In my institute, we wish and we pray that everything is as transparent as possible. Because we all assume that we are all just human beings. So. Giving time is very important. So if you're not seeing clearly on a day one, nothing is going to happen. You will see after a week or a month. You'll experience some grittiness, some dryness, which is very common. Dryness can go up to around six months. So this is all very important in your planning. If you are a 40 plus person, you will start having issues with your reading. Again, your surgeons would have decided what kind of surgery to be done on your eye. 
you'd have probably kept one eye a little less power back. That means if you're having a minus three, you'd have treated minus 2.5 in I which is near dominant. That means one eye is distant dominant, one eye near dominant. So we call a procedure called as monovision, where we keep one eye not fully corrected for the distance. And that 0.5 minus power is called nearsightedness, which helps you to read. That's called monovision. So when you see through both eyes, there'll be some amount of imbalance out there, which will be overcome by neural adaptation. Very important point I'm going to tell you here is a point of neural adaptation or neuroplasticity. That means that if you keep telling your brain that one eye seems a little weaker or one eye seems to be a little less clear, the brain star adaptation times takes a little longer time. So what is important here is see through both eyes, try to focus everything with both eyes, ignore that thought that one eye may be weaker or lesser. If you do that, your neuroadaptation is 30 to 40 times faster. And there is something called neuroplasticity. That means when you neuroadapt to new things faster, the brain also starts getting this new information and ignores what is a little weaker. That means even if you're having a 1% weak vision in one eye, and if you keep comparing it, the adaptation time becomes slower and your neuroplasticity sets in later. So remember this day two, two, two things, which is very important in a better outcome. This is the fundamental law of giving a perfect vision. The perfect vision doesn't just come with good laser, good skill, and good machines. It needs your neuroadaptation and how you interpret the functions. The point number nine is, what do I expect over time? The short term uh, and long term. During the short term, you will have dryness, you know, occasional irritations. When you see the street lights, you will see scatter. Sometimes you see something called ghosting. These are all normal phase. They disappear. Again, I'm repeating it. This is my favorite word, neuroadaptation and plasticity. The more you ignore, the faster you neuroadapt and the faster it becomes neuroplastic. Neuroplasticity sets in. So remember this very clearly. So these small issues creeps, uh, which keeps coming on and off completely disappears. What about long term? When I say long term, five, 10 years later, the only thing is that when you turn 40, if you're not 40 yet, you'll need reading glasses. If you're 40 and planned a surgery and your surgeon has planned accordingly, uh, to a nice format, then you know you might not need reading glasses for some time, but you'll still may get it. Your post cataract surgery, once you eventually develop cataract, today you don't need to worry because there was a time when you used to have problems calculating the lens, but we don't have it. And over time, I'm sure as we age, the technologies ages, we'll probably get a lot of new technologies to help you to get even to remove that reading glasses eventually when you're talking about 20, 2035 or 2040. These are the most important points, nine points what I mentioned, which you should know. The last one is, what is the worst thing which can happen, doc, is a question. I tell my patients that the worst thing which has happened is maybe, uh, power coming back. It's just not in anybody's hand. All of us should know that. If we work for 10, 15 hours a day and make the eyes to work and you've corrected your power and it comes back, it's because of the muscles or the weakness of it. So that is something which your surgeon has to decide whether he can recorrect or not. If the eye is healthy, you can still do a recorrection, but the surgeons will do the evaluation and then decide. Anybody has lost vision completely because of this? No, you can't go blind. And uh, that is the most important thing a lot of people want to hear. You don't go blind, but there are other issues, power coming back, 
and uh, you know some people have uh, full power coming back then what do we do and these things which we need to take care as we move on the third thing is something called as a post lasik ectasia or keratoconus it nothing but weakness of the cornea after surgery 99% of time if a person has been evaluated i mentioned my point number 2 in a very proper way it's very difficult to get this the chance of it is one in a lakh you know it's very rare to get it but where the cornea bulges out uh at a three dimensional way but there are procedures now which can flatten it at a very early stage which we did not have it 10 to 15 years back if the laser surgery is done can it get infected there is a chance of getting infected that's the reason we keep a close monitoring with antibiotics we keep a close look at what is happening uh to your corneas that's why we need a good follow ups sometimes the steroid drops we use for a week or two can induce a pressure change these people do have some sudden ghosting of images suddenly they get worried something has happened and they come to us and uh, this this is something which can also be managed by just pressure rowing drops for 3 to 4 days and everything gets settled down the other important thing is we have mentioned here about the the cornea which is where you do the procedure but what i would like to say is if you look at this eye there is the outside here this is the corneal structure this is where we do the laser and we correct the power sometimes what happens is everything is corrected but after a week or two weeks or sometimes after a year or two people come and say you know suddenly i'm not seeing things properly and when i look at the imaging here we do some image testing everything looks healthy now comes the question what's happening so we need to understand inside here there's a lens and these lenses and cornea if this is your cornea and this is your lens here they are married to each other that means whatever light comes from this cornea here is balanced by the lens and it helps to give you a good focus so that the ret it falls whatever falls on the retina is healthy so how does this balance happens is because of these muscles they are cardinal muscles there are muscles up down left right and their oblique muscles what do they do is they help in moving the eye in such a way that every time i'm looking at the object here my eye is this when i look down the muscles move like this so when the muscles move like this that in along with the muscles a lot of things happens inside the eye the lens also has to move up and relax this is entire thing is called accommodation and convergence that means you accommodate and you also move in closer to to read when i look up it has to relax because of today's work mask and lot of other factors this whole accommodation movement concept is completely sometimes goes into a tipsy turn that means it's sometimes instead of moving in it is not moving in and instead of coming closer it's it's moving out and otherwise it does it comes to the muscles pushes it i to come too close you may not see it in action but i'm talking about at a very very uh sub clinical level you see this happening so what is important here is before we do any procedure we have a speciality department which looks at these muscle movements which looks at how it works and we also have specialist to take care of it in case you develop this kind of weakness post surgery why is it important because along with the lasers we correct on the outer surface it's very important also to make sure that the muscles activities are also healthy we after surgery sometimes in many of my patients i send them to a uh, a therapist who helps to make sure that you do some exercises to give them healthy we call it as orthoptic exercises sometimes we do it at home sometimes you may just like a physiotherapy if you have a fracture or a wound you need physiotherapy for your muscles so that it becomes relaxed or is there no contraction there 
Same thing has to be done sometime for the eye. These are very emerging new concepts. Not everybody knows about it, not everybody follows it. But we've been doing this for some time and we see phenomenal improvement in your quality of vision and also the way your quality of life is. So the muzzle movement exercises are part and parcel of a healthy refractive procedure. So I completed my 10 points here. I wish anybody who wants a LASIK surgery done anywhere in the world should be aware of this. Again, I'm going to tell you, it's one of the safest procedures on the human body. I'm telling it after 20 years of doing these procedures and I know it's tremendously changed the way people see the world. What is important here is a good quality of life, a good quality of vision and a good healthy neuroplasticity which comes from believing that everything is transient and it will go. If you have these three things in you, then please get yourself evaluated and go for it. You will never regret. Thank you.